everybody. Still trying to get everything set up in here. But we are going to paint tonight. And we're going to do a little something every night, tonight through Thursday. And hope you guys can join me each night. We're going to talk about my artist's fly path and we're going to paint sunflowers. So, let me get my apron on. Don't want to get paint all over myself. So, how are you all today? I hope you're doing well. I'm going to give you a little list of stuff that I'm going to use tonight. You don't have to use the exact same things that I'm using, but um, I'm just going to use acrylic paint, some paint brushes, and I'm going to use my mixed media paper to do our painting. So, if you guys are here, start letting me know that you're here, say hello, give me a thumbs up, and I'm going to chat with you first, and then we're going to paint. So that'll give us a, a few minutes and let everyone who's planning on joining get in here. And of course I have my coffee. <laughs> okay, for those of you who are new to my page or to my online art world, you may not have heard of this before. Those of you who have followed me for a while probably know this. If you are a creative community member, you definitely know about this. This is something that I call my artist's flight path. And all it is, well, all it is, it is, um, a, it's a downloadable free resource that you can get. I've put a link in the description where you can download it and, and get your own copy of this. But what it does, um, at, Karen, you like my mug? <laughs> huge, I know. Um, the Artist Flight Path is, is just sort of a, an outline of my own journey as an artist. How I began, I started as, of course, uh, knowing nothing about art and needing step-by-step -step lessons. And then I have progressed along this path that has led to where I am now. And so everybody begins somewhere. Everyone has to start at the beginning. And the way I have this set up is, I don't know if you can see it because it printed out kind of light. I have it set up so that you can see on this little guide a description of each level of the path. And of course, it has a bird theme because I do everything with birds. But, so... It's kind of like a natural, organic way that people learn, and it's this is my own personal journey. So I went from creating through step-by-step -step lessons and enjoying art as a hobby to being more curious about trying new things on my own, getting a little bit brave, and looking for new tools and mediums and that sort of thing. Then... I was really interested in trying to figure out, okay, what is my thing? I've tried all these things, but what is what is best for me? And I want I want to find ways to make my artwork look different and original and unique. And then the end of the path would be where you are creatively confident about what you're making, you're happy with the things that you're creating. And you may be ready to begin some sort of business with your artwork. Okay, so I named each level after birds. We have the parrot level, the sparrow level, the hummingbird level, and the bluebird level. And tonight, we're going to talk about the parrot stage. All of these stages are supported in my creative community. So if you are a creative community member, then you understand what this is already. You can possibly chime in and answer questions if people have them while we're here. So um, most everyone begins at the parrot level, 
where they need a lot of guidance. They don't know what kind of brush to buy. They don't know what kind of paint to buy. They just need lots and lots of help. And there's lots and lots of help in the creative community where I give you a list of supplies. I give you step-by-step -step instructions. I give you um, lots of hands-on training. I give you videos about different mediums like uh, acrylics and watercolor and collage work. So there's lots and lots of step-by-step -step stuff in the creative community. And tonight we're going to start with the parrot stage and we're going to just kind of talk about what that is. So there are four levels. So we're going to do this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Each each bird level will will have a description. We're going to talk about what this level's needs are and how to tell if this is where you are. So you can print this out at home if you want to and keep it. But those who are at the parrot stage will need step-by-step -step instru instructions. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to paint a sunflower and I'm going to give you those step-by-step -step instructions. And um, there are some milestones that I have that are in the printout. So to, to kind of give yourself an idea of do you think you're at this level or not, you can look at the milestones and if you can check yes to these, then you are definitely at the parrot level. So are you just beginning to understand how to use a medium, the medium of your choice? You need step-by-step -step instructions. You're not quite ready to add in your own ideas and you want some guidance with purchasing supplies. So that would be this, this is the parrot level. And then it goes on and gives you some things that are your needs and some directions and some freebie type things for you. And it tells you how this stage is supported in my creative community. So, parent level students need some, some help with just getting started. And if you think about it kind of like if you were using a stencil. I don't know how many of you have used a stencil before. Let's see. I know I have some right here somewhere. Let me grab. I thought it would be easy to do, but this is a lot of stuff. Anyway, okay, so we have a stencil here. I'm going to try to illustrate it this way. And then we're going to start painting in just a minute. A parrot level person would just use the stencil as it is. You would take the pattern and use it. Okay? So then the next level would be the sparrow stage. And a sparrow is going to be someone who would look at the stencil and think, hmm, I wonder if I could use this with something besides paint. I wonder what kinds of things I could pull in and try. I want to try all the things. So give me all the things and let me try those and see what I like. Okay, so that's what the sparrow stage would do with the stencil. Then the next stage will be the hummingbird stage. And they might take the stencil and think, I like this and I think it will fit into what I normally like to do. And so I'm going to find a way to make this work for my style. I'm going to add this into the things that I normally do already and combine that with with my preferences, with my medium of choice, and use it in my artwork in a way that is all about me and how I do things. And I'm going to test it and see if it will work for me. I'm going to try this and see if it will work for my own style. Then the bluebird level would be a person who would look at the stencil and think, okay, I can use that in something that I'm doing, and how can I use that in a way that is going to be profitable? How can I use that in a way that is going to um, add to my business? How am I going to use that in a way that's going to elevate my artwork and make it more interesting? Okay? So...
that was just sort of like an illustration of different different stages of learning. And there's no right or wrong here. Um, if you are at the parrot level, then that's where I began. If you are at the sparrow level, then you're wanting to, to learn more, and that's good. Those at the hummingbird level are wanting to find their own style, and the bluebirds are pretty confident, but they need some help with maybe the business side of things. So the way that, that everything is set up on my website, I know that it might be a little bit confusing sometimes, but I have things that are available for people who are, you know, all the way over here just getting started and all the way over here with learning how to make their own business out of their artwork. So I just wanted to make sure that we covered that before we get started because if I start talking about the parrot level, I want you to make sure that, <laughs> that you understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm going to have a sip of coffee. It looks like you guys are all coming in and I'm really glad you're here. So basically what we're going to do this week is going to be something like a demonstration of a tutorial for each level of my flight path. So tonight it's going to be all about the parrot level. So if you are just learning how to paint, if you have never painted before, then this would be the kind of lesson that would help you the most. Okay, so does anybody have any questions before we, before I turn the camera around and I start actually painting? Because um, I want you to understand that what I'm doing tonight is not necessarily for everybody at every stage, but it can be used by everybody at every stage. So um, the way that I have things set up in my creative community is I may teach a step-by-step -step tutorial like I'm going to do tonight, and that would be perfect for the parrot level. But underneath that tutorial, I may give instructions for those who are in the sparrow level, those who are in the hummingbird level and the bluebird level, suggestions for how they can use that step-by-step -step tutorial as a jumping off point. I may say, you know, sparrows, I want you to use this tutorial and go and try a bunch of different things and I'll give them suggestions. Um, hummingbirds, take this tutorial, change it and make it more your style. And bluebirds, have you ever thought about adding blah, blah, blah to your business model? So this is going to be a little bit of a demonstration each night of something that would, would help you at, at that level. But I don't want you to get caught up in thinking that my creative community is only for a certain group of people because anyone at any level who is interested in art or interested in learning more about art can can gain help and um, uh, I'm reading comments and I'm getting squirrel moments. Okay. <laughs> Anybody can get help in here. Okay. Uh, Sherry says, will this tutorial be available to rewatch later? Yes, everything's going to be here on my Facebook page. You can come back. You guys know that, right? You can come back and watch any live videos that I have done in the past on my Facebook page. They're all here. All right, so let's try to do this without making everybody feel sick. All right. I'm going to rearrange just a little bit, and we are going to paint some sunflowers. I may have to stand up. I can't do it sitting down for some reason sometimes. Um, Beth says, any way to participate other than Facebook? You mean in, in what we're doing right now? No. My creative community is not on Facebook. It is all on my website. So it depends on what what you're asking about. Okay. 
here's where we're going to start. I've got my mixed media notebook here and I've got my paints here. I'm going to be using a little bit of all these colors. This is just like an orange. I'm not going to give you the specific names because it doesn't really matter. It's just whatever you have on hand that is similar to this color will work just fine. I don't want you to get caught up in that. Okay, so we've got an orange. We've got a blue. Some brown. And some green. Okay, then you're going to need a deep yellow. This is yellow ochre, but I will tell you that. And then a Oops, where's my bright yellow? Here we go. A bright yellow. And some sort of turquoise. Okay, and I'm going to use... I'm going to use brushes for this one. I'm going to use a very small liner brush and I'm going to use a medium filbert brush. All right. I think I need to turn this. I'm going to turn this this way. I think that'll be a better a better way to do it. And let me readjust just a little bit. I'm going to pull this up so you can see a little better. Okay. So this is a mixed media sketchbook. There's this brand, Strathmore is a good brand. There's also, there's another one. This is another good brand, the Canson. And the paper in these is really thick. So it holds your paint really well and it's not going to really, um, it's not going to buckle and, and cause you a bunch of problems. So I forgot white. We're going to need white paint too. Okay. I'm just going to get some out. I use a lot of white paint so I have this giant container of it and I love it. I go through more white than anything else. Okay, we're going to start with our really small brush and I'm just going to kind of sketch out where our main subject is going to live here. And I'm going to use some brown. The first thing I'm going to do is make just a little spot where I think the top of my container is going to be. So maybe not quite halfway down the page and then just gonna pull down like almost something like a, a rectangle maybe make it a little bit wider than that and you can make your container whatever shape you want yours to be I'm just going to let mine be a little bit wider at the bottom than it is at the top. And I'm going to make my horizon line. And I'm going to move it up. I don't want it to be right here at the very bottom of my container. Okay. Now we're going to just make a circle just like this. And our uh, petals, I guess they would be, you know, they're petals, <laughs> on our sunflower are going to come out like this. And they're going to begin here and come out over our center just a little bit. So I'm just going to sketch that in just to have an idea of where it's going to live. And then I'm going to put a stem right back here. 
and the indication of some sort of leaf. Maybe another one right here that's kind of small. Okay, so that's a really, really rough sketch. And that's how I begin all of my paintings. That's just the way that I do it. And the next thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and put in a little bit of some background color. Sometimes I don't do anything on the background until I'm finished with this. But for this one, we're just going to go ahead and put in a little bit of, of some background. So I'm going to take my, my Filbert brush and some white. And I'm going to grab a tiny bit of this turquoise. And I'm going to mix up a really pretty light turquoise color. And also, if you're painting on paper, that paper is going to soak up your paint like crazy. Much more than it would if you were using a canvas. So you may want to use a little bit more water or you could start with gesso on your paper. Gesso is just like kind of like a primer and it makes your surface um, if it has if you're painting on a porous surface like wood or paper then the gesso is going to seal that up and make it non-porous. But I'm just going to wet my brush a little bit because I'm not I'm not going to try to gesso and wait for that to dry and then come back and do this. I'm going to go ahead and just do it. And I'm using acrylic paint, of course. I didn't say that at the beginning. Okay, so down here, I'm going to make it a little bit darker. That's a lot darker. Just for some separation. And if you notice, I'm not, I'm not really covering all of the white. I'm just putting down a little bit of color just to get me going. Okay. Um, let's see. So you say, can a pencil be used to do this, to sketch it out? Yes, you can do that. However, one of the things that I like about using paint when you sketch it out is that some of this brown paint is still going to be visible when I'm done. And I like that, but you may not. So, Sherry said, can I show the Filbert brush up close? I can, and it is covered in paint. <laughs> it is a number 022. Filbert. It is from the Soho Urban Artist Collection. And Kathy said she missed the beginning. Can she watch it on replay? Yes, you can. Okay, so I've got some of my background in here. And as I'm looking at this, I'm going to go ahead and decide where is my light going to be coming from. And I think that I want my light to be coming from this direction, so that's going to make this side darker and this side lighter. So I'm going to go ahead and make this lightened up over here, and darker right here. And the way that I paint is very impressionistic. So I'm not going to be trying to do anything perfectly. I like for there to be some spots that are missing. I like for there to be some little indications of things that you wouldn't expect. So just keep that in mind as you're watching. Okay, I'm going to go back to my smaller brush. And I'm going to put a little bit of this orange and just in some random spots 
I know that sounds strange, but remember when I said that when I'm finished, you'll be able to see even some of the brown? That's what I am doing right now. I'm making it so that when I paint over this, there will still be some of this orange that kind of pops through and shows up. Okay. Oh, sorry, Sheila. She said, can I show the bristles? I'm kind of embarrassed to show my paintbrushes because I am so bad about not cleaning them properly. And I am a palette knife person. All right. Look at that. That looks bad. But those are the bristles on the filbert brush. All, a filbert is just rounded on the end. It's not flat. So it's just rounded. has a rounded tip on the end of it. Okay, now let's get started on our actual flower. I hold my paintbrush sort of like this when I want to paint really loosely. Let me show you. This is a palette knife. And this is what I like to paint with the most. But I'm going to save this for another time. Tonight we're just going to use our brush. But when I paint with a brush, I normally hold it in my hand like this. And I'm going to take some dark brown. And I'm going to fill in this spot here that's going to be the center of our sunflower. I'm also going to put a little brown there and a little bit down here, maybe a little bit right there. Okay, remember we said we want our light to be coming from this way. All right, so we've got our brown there. I'm going to wash my brush off again. And now I'm going to pick up this yellow ochre, which is just like a mustard yellow. And I'm going to start by just sweeping that across in little strokes like this all the way around the edge of my sunflower. But on this side, we're going to start about right there. And we're going to pull it across like this. Just make little swipes with your brush. Okay. I'm going to keep this on my brush. And I'm going to pick up this bright yellow. Which is a cadmium yellow. And I'm going to go back over it and do the same thing again. Now I'm using a really thick, heavy bodied acrylic paint. All right, I've got a little bit of brown on there because I got into the center of it. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse this off. And let's pick up some white and mix it with a tiny bit of yellow, the bright yellow. And remember we said that we want our light to be shining over here. So everything on this side is going to be brighter and lighter. So especially right here, we're going to want to put some really light strokes. And then let's say the inside here is going to be in a shadow because these petals would be kind of covering up to about here. So we can put some of these little highlights out here on this edge. But don't go too far in because that's going to take away the, the depth that you have built there. Okay, I've still got some of this yellow and white right here on my brush. And I'm going to take it and scribble it around in my background. OK, 
Okay. And now we're gonna we're gonna leave this and let this all just kind of settle just a little bit. And then we're gonna work, let's work on this here. So I'm gonna make a pretty blue. Actually, I need to wash this off. I'm not used to having to wash my brush because I use my palette knife so much. I just wipe it and keep going. Okay. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this blue and I'm gonna mix it with some white. And we're going to cover up some of this orange that we've got here in this container. So you see how it still peeks out a little bit? I like the way that looks. I just grabbed good chunk of white and we're going to just pull that down the side right here because remember this side over here is where the lightest part is okay and now let's work on our leaves so I've still got this white and blue on my brush so I'm just going to dip it into my green And you don't really even have to to make the shape of a leaf. Just do something that looks somewhat similar. Just like that. And maybe you might want to put something that looks similar to leaves back here. That's up to you. And that may be it for the leaves. So you don't want to overdo it. You don't want too many leaves in there. But while I've got this green on my brush, I'm going to scribble it around again. Because this pulls that color into the background and it helps it all to just kind of come together. Okay, so next I'm going to rinse this off. Can you see where you can you can still see little hints of that orange that I put in to begin with, but it's not overpowering. Okay, now let's work on our background a little bit more. We may need to darken some areas. We're definitely going to have to to clean it up some. So that's what we're going to do next. And sometimes you start on something, you think you want one background color, but once you put in some of the colors that you're working on, you change it. Or I do. That's the way I do it anyway. Um, so, as I'm looking at this, I think that the turquoise is good. So, we're just going to cover up a little bit of this messy stuff I've got going on here. So, I'm not actually going to do a lot of change. I'm just going to clean it up a little. So, I'm going to take some white and my turquoise. We don't want to cover up all of it, but you just want to just kind of clean it up a little bit. All these layers that you can create with acrylic can give you lots and lots of cool effects that you can't really get with any other medium, or it's harder to get it anyway. Okay, remember over here is lighter. Nope, sorry, over here is lighter. Let me do that. Over here is supposed to be lighter. Okay, light, dark. So we got to darken this over here. And we can bring it down in saturation a little bit by adding some brown. I really need to make this side a little bit darker. And there's a little too much orange showing up there, so I'm going to cover that up.
And when you put in another background after you've started, you can kind of cut into whatever the subject is that you've created, in this case a flower, and you can shape it up a little more if you want to. Okay, so I picked up some white and lightened up this so it kind of just all works together now. And then we're going to put lighter over here, darker over here. But there's still a little bit of that yellow and a little bit of that green peeking through there. You can see it. And I'm going to take a little bit of brown and just kind of make a little shadow over here on this side. A little something like that. So mixing the colors that you have in your subject into your background kind of as you go is really helpful or I find it really helpful kind of just pulls it all together and gives you lots of interest and depth and if you notice my container is not perfect my flower is not perfect there's a little bit of some orange showing through in some spots which makes it interesting to me. I like the way that looks and it's very impressionistic and fun and not very realistic but at the same time when you put your lights and your darks in the right places it makes it look like it has more depth. I'm going to put a little bit of some dark yellow right in there. And you see how that just makes it look like there's a bit of a shadowy spot in there and it gives the flower the depth that it needs and then these outside edges would be lighter it doesn't even have to really be exactly the right shape for it to look like a sunflower when you get your lights and your darks in the right places. Okay. The flowers that I showed you in, if you got my email and if you saw the post here on my Facebook page about us painting sunflowers tonight, in that picture there was a little bit of animal print tissue paper that I had placed in the center of the flower. So this is called collage or you can just say mixed media. But you could take some little pieces of tissue paper or something like that. And what I like to use, nope, not that one. What I like to use is this matte medium. It's a fluid medium. It's really thin. It's not really thick. And that will allow you, once the flower is dry, I would recommend you wait till it's dry. And then you can collage some little pieces of leopard print, if you wanted to, in the center of your sunflower. And that gives it a little more whimsical and fun look. But um, I'm not going to do that because I'm going to mess up my yellow <laughs> if I try to do that right now. So hope that this was helpful. I know I work really fast and um, of course you can come back and watch the replay anytime. Always be sure that you sign your paintings no matter what. If it's a, a practice or not, I'm not that great at doing this on a regular basis. I'm going to try to get better at it. Also, let me tell you this, and try to write and talk at the same time. Don't just initial your paintings. Write your whole name 
if possible because let me finish writing my name because I can't talk and spell at the same time apparently you are in okay be sure that you spell out your whole name I'm just gonna leave it at that <laughs> don't put your initials put your whole name because I doubt anybody else has your exact name and your exact signature so just trust me from experience putting your whole name is a good idea okay let's see if you guys have any questions um, thanks Jan she says she can't wait to watch tomorrow night thank you Karen and Pat I'm glad you guys enjoyed it and feel like you've learned something Sherry said the depth in the background is awesome thank you um, Peggy said I tried painting sunflowers the other day boy not as good as yours well now you can use this technique and try it again okay so what we just what we just experienced this was an example of what it would be like if you're in my creative community and you are a parrot level learner so this would be a step-by-step -step lesson walking you through where to put things how to use your paints all of the specifics tomorrow night what we're going to do is take something very similar to this and we're going to recreate it and we're going to use our flight path and we're going to talk about the sparrow level and what kinds of things sparrows would want to do would need to do would be able to experiment with using the same kind of tutorial hi Stephanie I'm glad you enjoyed it um, Sherry says how about the year? I'm not sure what that means. Um, thank you all very much. Sherry, can you explain a little bit more? Uh, Jennifer says, this is beginner if I get in community what link for beginners community okay my creative community is one hub one spot where everybody at every level gets to learn alongside each other so there's there's not really there are levels inside there so there's one thing that you purchase one community that you join but within that community there are tutorials that are labeled beginner intermediate advanced and then there are also within those lessons there are suggestions for the parrots the sparrows the hummingbirds and the bluebirds I hope that makes sense oh Cherry says adding the year to your signature yes that is a good idea too I'm sorry I did not understand what what you were saying when you sign it put the date that's what she meant yeah okay mm -hmm. Bobby says love the freehand look of the flower thank you and Amy says love it looking forward to seeing other levels I'm so glad that you all were here tonight and that you are interested in learning more about art this is my favorite thing in the world to do and I love that I can share it with other people and so you can come back tomorrow night at five o'clock same time same place and we're going to work on another sunflower but we're gonna come at it from a different angle and we're going to talk about um, if you are at well let me just do this if you are at the sparrow stage 
then this will be what we'll do tomorrow night. We're going to talk about new techniques, tools, and ideas, um, being brave with your choices. And if you are a person who has been using step-by-step -step lessons for a while and you're getting a little bit bored with just following the rules and you're ready to mix it up a little bit and try something different, then the sparrow level would probably be where you would fit in. Um, Rebecca says, how much per month to join your clubs? It's $47 a month. Um, Rosie says, where can I see the repeat? It will be right here on my Facebook page. You should be able to click on a button that says lives and that's where it will be. Um, let's see. Okay, some questions are coming in. Nancy says, vase suggestions for other color. If you are interested in color and trying to pick the, the perfect colors, then I would suggest that you purchase a color wheel because it will show you, like for example, we did a yellow flower and it's going to show me that these are the colors here that would complement that flower. So blues, purples, reds, pinks, any of those colors would be great for your container. Okay, Sherry says, where do you get the printout of the stages? There is a link up here in the description and you can just click on it and you can download that for free and print that out. You don't have to even print it. You can save it to your computer and just look at it. Uh, Laura asks if this will be available to watch later. Yes, it is. Peggy says she's a rule breaker. Me too. Um, any more questions? Bobby says she thinks that the color wheel helps with shading. Yes, it will help with that too. Okay, I don't see any other questions. But let me tell you this though. Um, you're welcome, Teresa. I have, in addition to us doing these cool sunflowers tonight through Thursday night, I also have a workshop. I'm going to grab that link real quick. There is a workshop that is coming Wednesday and Thursday. It's a two-day workshop. And it's for those of you who are interested in creating your own original artwork and ideas for creating your own original art business. On Wednesday, we're going to talk about original art. And on Thursday, I'm going to talk about the business side of things. Let me see if I can paste that in there. If you're interested in that at all, um, then there's a link here. It's called Take Flight. And I asked just in a post here on my Facebook page this past, this last week, what questions do you have about art or business? And I got lots and lots of questions about creating original art and some business questions. So this workshop is digging a little bit deeper and we're really going to, to have some fun. Let me turn my camera around so I can see y'all. So you can see me. I can't see y'all. <laughs> you know what I mean. Okay. Um, this workshop is going to it's going to help you to see why you need to be working towards creating your own original artwork and how you can set up an online art business that is tailored to you and your needs. So what I have found in my own uh, experience is that there is a common thread that runs through both when you're creating original art and when you're creating a good sustainable art online business. And that's what we're going to discuss. So Wednesday and Thursday, that's when that workshop is taking place. It's all going to be on Facebook in a Facebook group. And um, there's the link if you are interested in coming in and learning with us there. And so there's going to be, 
there's a video each morning at 10 o'clock that talks where I'm talking about why you need to do what we're talking about doing and then there will be a live question and answer time and demonstration time at noon on um, Wednesday and Thursday so I'm gonna walk you through I've never done this before on a live video but we're gonna see what happens I'm gonna walk you through me creating my own original painting and try my best to let you see what's happening in my brain while I'm creating it so someone had asked me if I could do that and I thought that's a really good a really good idea and um, so that's what I'm going to be doing on Wednesday at noon in the workshop and on Thursday there will be a video at 10 a.m. where I'm talking about business in general and then I will do another live video at noon on Thursday in the workshop where I walk you through how I've set up my own business um, and just sort of like a demonstration on how you can do the same thing so if that's interesting at all to you then this workshop is available and um, see Tanya says will we be able to watch the Wednesday and Thursday videos if you're in okay the sunflower tutorials all this week will be here live on my Facebook page for anybody to watch anytime you can watch the replays later the workshop is in a private Facebook group it's just Wednesday and just Thursday and there is a $20 charge for that so if you are a creative community member you don't have to pay for the take flight website website workshop go to my website and log in with your member information and it will the information for the workshop will be there in our schedule for February so let's see anybody else have any questions I'm looking over here because that's where my computer is all right I don't see anything so I'm gonna go for tonight I'll see you back here tomorrow night hopefully at five o'clock central time and we will discuss and explore the sparrow stage. I'll see you next time.